hey guys i know i look a hot mess please forgive me i'm going to go and get ready i need to go and pick up my sister from school but i just wanted to make a quick video so i'm starting label tomorrow how do i feel about it not ready it's been a while um but on my journey i'm going to do some reading and stuff but what i am struggling with is procrastination and my procrastination isn't oh i'm watching something i'm watching netflix and stuff like that the usual because on this course you're busy so busy like that's not even my procrastination my procrastination is doing things in the wrong order and not prioritizing properly so i make to-do lists and i cross things off the to-do lists but i've just had a session with my study skills mentor and she's like to me how um nah 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 there's things that you need to be doing first like your dissertation stuff you need to be doing first and basically she showed me how to create like a priority i don't know what she called it but basically we have a list of let me grab my laptop real quick we have a list of must do could could do no must do should do could do and not for this week and basically I put my whole list there's even more stuff put all the whole list in the must do bit color coded it what is to do family what is to do with school and all of that stuff and then separated them into what i must do this week or today and what i must i could do this week what i should do this week and what doesn't really matter and what is not for this week so that's what i've done which is super helpful we know that what did she say it takes six six weeks to build a habit um yeah it takes six weeks to develop a habit so i'm gonna try this out and let you guys know how it goes but i'm hoping it will go well because i've got so much to do and time is not on my side if but if if you let time manage you you'll never manage the time i'm saying the quote wrong what did she say um we need to snatch time snatch bits of time it's on my bus journey i need to snatch time yeah is time controlling me or am I controlling time? Um, and I need to place a reward alongside my task and I'm gonna use like stickers and treat myself with having, more well, my treat is having a good night's sleep because that's so important to me. But a normal person like you would treat yourself with watching a great TV show or something like that. I don't actually have the time because I've got so much to do. But anyway, I'm going to um, come back on here later on and show you guys how I get ready for placement. This hair needs to go. I'm gonna wash my hair um, and then I'll be making my breakfast and sorting myself out. So tomorrow is not stressful and I'm not in a rush because I do need to wake up and leave very early in the morning. But for now, I'm going to pick up my sister, spend some time with her and yes. Hi guys, as I said earlier, I've got placement tomorrow. So my preparation for placement involves making my breakfast beforehand. So in the morning, I'm not doing a lot. So I basically make a smoothie with spinach to give me energy throughout the day because my iron levels are low. Um, and I use oat milk, oats, banana, and the spinach. Um, so I'm just gonna wash the spinach and add it all into the blender to create the smoothie so I don't have to do it in the morning. I'm low-key lactose intolerant, so um, I can't have dairy or that's going to make my stomach be on fire. That's a lot. And, but yeah. <coughs> I'm going to do this twice and have two smoothies ready for my next two days of placement because obviously it's 12 and a half hour shifts. When I come home, I don't necessarily want to do this again. Oh, there's pasta. Okay. And for my lunch, I just eat whatever's in the fridge. <laughs> like my sister just said she's made pasta, so that's what I'm gonna have for work because it saves me money as well from for buying something every <laughs> time.
there we have it my breakfast with my two shifts done and sorted lovely this is very healthy gonna keep me active alive energetic on the 12 and a half hour shifts by god's grace but yes good night and i'll see y'all tomorrow and we'll see how the shift goes hopefully it's a great one already mm. but I'm um, I need to stay positive and hopefully we will have a great day I've got until eight o'clock so yeah time seems to be moving pretty fast but the busier we get the faster it's gonna be labor ward is quite busy but I'm not on labor ward I'm in triage so yeah just gonna have a snack probably reply to some messages send some emails use this coffee break productively and hopefully the rest of the day is good and like this vlog it will be interesting because there'll be things happening but yes um yeah so we've been talking about how to assess a woman in triage so the first thing you ask is what brings you here the second thing would be to take the lady's notes um and with the notes you can see her history her history blood results and any more information then you would um look at the woman use your clinical judgment to see what you need to do next either her observations or maybe you need to palpate and see um the position of baby um if let's say she's speaking about contraction see how far along the contractions are going and that sort of thing and how intense they are so she also shared something quite interesting that she's seen in her practice so with um eastern european by the way i take lots of notes from placement that's what i'm looking but um a tip for you guys take lots of notes so you remember stuff but yeah eastern european ladies labor very quickly asian ladies they could be in labor for like three days um, and, but every woman is different still but that's something she's noticed that I found quite interesting and it's kind of um, not dependent but I think your, the shape of your pelvis does affect um, how you will labour because babies come through your pelvis isn't it but yes you can't do things in a particular order because your care is catered to the woman so it depends what's going on if everything is normal then yeah go the normal way so after you've done her observations palpate listening to baby determine the position of the baby the lie of the baby um is the baby engaged and that sort of thing um and listening in is dependent on how many weeks she is as well so below 28 weeks you'll use the sonic aid um which is this um so you listen in let's say she's coming contracting you listen in after the contraction to see if there's any prolonged d cell which is the baby's heart rate going low for um three minutes or so but um yeah you listen in after the contraction if she's high risk and she's above 28 weeks it would be the ctg um if she's not high risk you can still use this one so reasons why you should admit a lady onto triage her symptoms suggest that she's in labor she's got antepartum hemorrhage so that means she's pregnant and bleeding previous poor obstetric outcome so previously when she's had a baby before it was it was it went really badly um reduced fetal movements that's a major thing because that prevents stillbirths and stuff so yeah um rupture of membranes so her water's breaking um any abdominal pain um and if the lady's been advised to come in early 
um, when she's in early labour. Yeah, so I've actually got a lady coming in 25 weeks with abdominal pain, so that should be interesting. So yeah, I've just been reading the trust guidelines. Another tip, if there's nothing happening or nothing for you to do, read the trust guidelines. Familiarise yourself of what to do in certain situations. Earlier I was complaining of not much happening and being bored and stuff. But it's given me time to read up and be prepared for next time. And I don't know what else the day holds because it's a 12 and a half hour shift. It's only 12 o'clock. Um, so yeah, it's a blessing in disguise. I see you, God. I see you. Thank God. But yeah, um, I'll keep you guys updated if anything else interesting happens. Hey guys. Um, <clears throat> I have to come back to you the next day to fill you in what happened in the rest of my shift. Um... The shift got very very busy and then I had a meeting after work and then I had to sleep because I've got work today. Um, so excuse my um, auntie-ish look, I'm getting ready for work but I wanted to let you guys know um, what happened. So tree guard started to pick up, I had a 25 weeker coming with abdominal pains and um, in my head I'm like okay maybe she's having Braxton Hicks, maybe it's early contractions. Um, we don't know what's going to happen so we will give her an examination and see when she came this is why it's so important to look at the woman's history yeah because when she came and um, we could see that she's got fibroids and the midwife was like her pains could be caused by the fibroids i was like oh i've never thought about that or seen that or heard that um so yeah she had fibroids and basically we done her observations and we felt her um, we palpated and everything um, and we concluded that the pain was fibroids because also the doctor came in when things are preterm the doctor normally um, so I got a message when things are preterm the doctor normally takes over that so the doctor came in gave her a speculum examination which is just like a cervical smear test if anyone's had a smear test I don't know how to explain it but um, it's just an examination with this this kind of tool is plastic um, which um, goes into the vagina opens it up so that you can visibly see if the cervix is open or not um, and then you'll need a chaperone so I was the doctor chaperone um, yeah the chaperone is just another person there that can basically say what has been done if that makes sense but yeah so she had the examination um, and her cervix was closed and after asking her many questions, the doctor determined that it was the fibroid and that basically because baby's blowing, blood growing, blood supply to the fibroid um, has been reduced. So that means the fibroid is dying and as the fibroid is dying, um, that is going to be painful um, and that's what she's experiencing. Um, so they spoke about different types of pain relief and stuff and she had had a scan not long ago as well, which is why this was also confirmed. But yeah, that was amazing. Then I had another lady who came in um, with her partner. She came in, she was group group B strep, group GBS, group B strep, strep B positive. What's it called? Strep B? I'll write it down below, I can't remember. Um, but she had that and basically she had been told in her pregnancy come in early labor when she starts contracting and everything so she came in at the right point because upon examination so of course i done her urinalysis her observations her blood pressure her pulse and everything everything was fine um because of the clinic was in a rush and also because she didn't have epidural or anything um which of course she wouldn't she can't get that home i don't what am i talking about but because of the pain and stuff the midwife done the ve so we wouldn't have to examine her twice so the midwife examined her and saw that she was three centimeters and i was like oh did you expect that and i was literally there with her and her partner speaking to them for about 15 minutes just talking about their children talking about their hopes and dreams it was nice um so yeah that happened and basically she she was admitted onto the ward because she has group b strep because she's group b strep positive she would be given antibiotics um from now yeah and she was saying that she was even meant to be induced the next day so um yeah baby came on his or her own accord after this yeah so this is why the midwife done the ve because i was trying to get them out fast there was a woman um who was making so much noise outside 
she needed to come into triage to be assessed and the midwife had a feeling that she is in the late stages of labor with the noises she was making so she came in um and this is what i mean about how your care is tailored to everyone normally you'll do the person's observations and you'll ask certain questions and all of that stuff she came in we asked her about baby's movements we asked her if her walks are broken asked her the important questions got her to lay on the bed and no obs or nothing what we did was we um <coughs> my throat is dry um we examined her upon examination the medical was like she's eight centimeters and she's like no she changed it to seven but i knew she meant that she's eight centimeters so we done everything quickly um we gave her entonox and everything um and then we got her to the room and the ward was actually busy so there was no other midwives available and i was saying can i stay with her and i was like yeah yeah we're gonna have to stay but i've also got triage i'm balancing this in triage i was like this is insane um she said that sometimes she's balancing two laborers at once remember this midwife has been a midwife for 32 years but the shortages are mad so that's not right but anyway so we got into the room um got her onto the bed on her left in whatever position she want we told her she can mobilize and everything she didn't need a ct to do anything i was listening to baby with the um sonic aid um but when she was having her contractions it's like the vulva the vulva was opening um and then her water just suddenly broke and when she was in triage her show came by the way but yeah her water just suddenly broke and things were just cracking on so 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 fast it was so 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 fast so 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 fast um also when we got into the room i had done her obs as well so we knew that she's okay because obviously that's important but it wasn't priority um but yeah we done her obs and her partner's also there and this woman just wants the epidural she's like just give me the epidural just give me the epidural at this point it was just me and her in the room because the midwife was trying to find another midwife for her um and i was like yeah we're gonna need to locate the anesthetist and everything the midwife said that there's no midwife other midwife for her um and she said by the time she probably gets the epidural it's not gonna work because she's so far along in her labor and that baby seems like baby's really coming soon so yeah it was just mad things just picked up so quickly and she was doing involuntary pushing with her involuntary pushing you could see baby's head almost yeah you could see baby's head um she was excreting ex what's the word excreting excreting I had to get tissue real quick and like cover that up and like yeah it reminds me of like when people have water births because like when they like poo in the pool like you have to get the sieve and like sieve it out just being real with you guys um and then she said she needed to go to toilet and the midwife was like oh no we're gonna have to get you a commode um because if you go to the toilet your baby's probably gonna come out of the toilet she's like no no i just need to pee pee and the midwife was like nah um but anyway she ended up being on herself it was just a little bit and we were also wiped that um my baby was coming and she asked for warm compress and warm compress is basically when you use um, i'm going to call it a towel to make sense to you but anyone else would know it's a swab um and you put it in warm water but the water wasn't getting warmer so you put it in warm water to um prevent tearing and it helps the perineum to stretch and you could tell that she's done her research and she was like yeah what use warm compress so i don't tear mid was like i can't promise you that you won't tear from it but we'll definitely use it so i was using the warm compress um and yeah as baby was coming i was holding onto garden baby's head as baby was coming out um but baby's head came out so fast and normally like you know in labor and stuff to prevent that huge tear prevent it happening like that you ask women to stop and to breathe slowly like this to breathe slowly um and then you will gently guard baby's head downwards and then up and then check if the cord is around the head i felt for the cord um it wasn't around the necktie but i moved the cord out of the way and um, when baby's head came out but it came out so fast that i couldn't bring baby down um and even she was like wait what just happened like in all her pain she's like what even the midwife was shocked um the head and body came out at the same time and it was just so fast and it was beautiful it's beautiful and i was so happy for her she was so shocked that it happens like that but i knew she really wanted the epidural but it, it happened um and i was kind of glad for her because a lot of the time when people get the epidural yeah they either end up in a section or they end up having a born tooth delivery or a forcep delivery um because they can't feel what they're doing um so i was happy for her 
um and then put a baby on her wipes baby down put a clean baby on ta- clean towel on baby um dad clump, clamped and cut the cord but i could see the midwife is thinking about something so the midwife was thinking about the fact that um about the placenta and everything to me it looked like the placenta was just there um so basically um we could see a bit of blood um and you know it's not more percent to come out there's a gush of blood but this blood looked a bit more than usual and the midwife was like yeah quickly give her the centimeter and the midwife drew it up and i wanted to draw it up and check and everything so after she drew it up i was checking it she was like no, no no just give it to her quickly and i was like okay like i was anticipating that okay she's anticipating me with pph and the woman bleeding like crazy i have to speed this up because i have to go to work um so yeah basically that happened i gave her the centimetrin um we did um active third stage so yeah obviously the centimetrin um um and yeah the placenta came and everything but she was bleeding and the midwife um examined her and thought she had a third degree tear but said she needs to get the registrar to come and check registrar registrar checked and confirmed it and basically i was with this woman for quite some minutes a long time with a swab um in her vajayjay um just holding it to stop blood from flowing out at the same time she's saying that she feels dizzy she's getting dizzy and tired midwife does her obs her obs are fine um and they're just sorting her out and preparing theatre for the um prepare of her perineum because it was a third degree tear and the skin there looked so thin and basically some fibers in her anus had teared so um yeah it was quite it was it was a big one but once she had the epidural she was fine um so we went to theatre and i stayed with her in theatre and the team the theatre team was so lovely and the doctor like what doctor talks to you and what theatre team theatre team is normally rude now i was saying that um i want to go back to my old trust now i love this trust <laughs> but they were so nice um and yeah so repaired her perineum sent her to recovery the rest is history also i forgot to mention that in the moment i had lots of guilt i thought it's my fault because obviously i i helped her birth her baby i thought that's my fault she's got a third degree tear and everything but upon speaking to the midwife baby's head came way too fast um as i explained we couldn't do the um maneuver where you bring baby's head down and up um because the head just came out so fast um and yeah they were actually thanking me they said um the doctor came to thank me the midwife thanked me about um compressing that compressing that blood like um just stopping the blood flow and staying with the woman so yeah we thank god for that honestly um yeah in this job to be a blessing unto people so i pray that that continues and today's a good one too but yeah I'm gonna end this here. Also guys, this is me getting ready for work quickly. As you can see, I've got this one in my back. I've got eight minutes to go, trying to make a sandwich, need to do my hair. I'm not organized today. You just say good morning. Good morning. Say hi everybody. Stick out your tongue. Uh...